The Rampage can still get into the playoffs if they win, but a lot needs to happen. Mark Rippon coming back will help. But Washington, who's been out of the playoffs for a few weeks, they're trying to stop that from happening. As Sean Salisbury finds Chris Conway down the left side and over the middle, Mel Gray, he's in the end zone. Seven to nothing lead for Washington. Mark Rippon, he's about to load up and rip it deep with nobody in his face. He finds Willie Galt and he could go all the way. Willie Galt, the speedster, he ties the game up. The Rampage get the ball back. Rippon throws it over the middle, intercepted by Sean Gale, but Salisbury gives it right back to the Rampage. Mark Rippon, off of that interception, would rip it over the middle to Gil Fennerty, and Gil Fennerty finds his way to the 41. This would lead to a Roger Ruzek made field goal. It's 10 to seven for the Cincinnati Rampage. Mel Gray would get the ball over the middle, direct snap, but he would get tackled. It's a fumble, recovered by Brian Cox. And this would lead to Mark Rippon stepping up into the pocket, ripping it deep, finding Willie Galt, diving for his second touchdown of the game, 17-7. Salisbury would find Mark Super Duper going down the right side. He'll find the end zone, three-point ball game. But Mark Rippon, he'll say never let die, throwing it deep to fast Willie Galt. And he will have his third touchdown of the game. Cincinnati eventually wins this game 27 to 14. Let's see if they can make it in. They need something to happen for the next game for them to get to the playoffs. The Rampage basically need these two teams to tie. If one wins, they're in. If the other wins, they're in. Wright and uh, Brooks come back from injury. We'll start off with Bill Brooks this time, not Reggie Brooks getting the ball over the middle from Dan Marino. This is the game of two legendary quarterbacks who knew how to do well and did great doing it. Bill Brooks caught the ball over the middle to get the ball into the red zone and Marino would find his tight end Jim Jensen for the touchdown. Seven to nothing lead early for Milwaukee. You know who could not be covered today? His name was Mark Clayton. Former receiver for Dan Marino at the Miami Dolphins. He would find him early and often for touchdowns. No defensive back could cover him. You know who couldn't cover Jerry Rice? The Milwaukee Warriors couldn't cover him as he's in the end zone diving in. Misses the extra point, so it's an eight point ball game. Bill Brooks over the middle, getting the ball to around the 49 yard line. Inside of Guardians territory is Bill Brooks, the always favorite receiver on this team of Dan Marino. But the favorite receiver for him in the end zone was definitely Mark Clayton, 21 to six. Favre, if there's anyone who could make a comeback, it's him in this era. Throw it to Bavaro, this would lead to a Lowry made field goal, 21 to nine. Favre and the Guardians get the ball back. The throw is of course to Jerry Rice, you couldn't miss him. Making it into Milwaukee territory and Favre backs up. He'll throw down the right side. Rice is going up against the corner. He beats him to the one, but they're unable to scamper into the end zone, 21 to 12. The big story here is getting field goals and not touchdowns for Favre. However, he'll make a mistake. He'll throw this interception to Carnell Lake to around the 44 yard line. The direct snap to Reggie Brooks. I almost said Reggie Bush there. They're both running backs, but you can't mix these two up. Getting the ball inside of Guardians territory, Marino would find Reggie Brooks, and he'll eventually scamper in for the touchdown 28 to 12. Bill Brooks this time, you can't mess that guy's name up, gets the ball over the middle and scampers in for the touchdown. Dan Marino, celebrate there, looks like Milwaukee might have a good chance of making it to the playoffs. However, Marino fumbles. Recovered by Kevin Green, and this allows for the Guardians to attempt to come back. This one by Ron Moore. Late in the game, Favre fires to Jerry Rice. Gets it inside Milwaukee territory. Uh-oh, they might be slipping. Favre stepping up, finding Jerry Rice. He'll find the end zone. Nobody could cover him today. And more troubles for the Warriors as Brooks would fumble. Recovered by Mike Harden. But there's not a lot of time left as Favre is unable to get it done to Mark Bavaro. Eventually, the Milwaukee Warriors would win this game. If Buffalo loses, they'll win the division and they're almost guaranteed a spot in the playoffs here. 
Birmingham needs a win and a San Francisco loss. Seattle has nothing to play for, so they'll make a bunch of replacements for the playoffs. Myra will be in. Walker, Bunch, McCaffrey, Williams, and Reeves would make the starting offense so that they don't get any injuries. That's what Buddy Ryan is kind of worried about. As in the first quarter, after an interception, Rick Meyer would play action rollout bootleg, throw it over the middle to Williams, making it into Birmingham territory. Meyer would step up, give it to Herschel Walker, who ran for governor or senator, excuse me, in the state of Georgia, which uh, was the college that he ended up playing for. He'll throw it to Gerard Bunch in the red zone, as did Rick Meyer. They've got the touchdown, surprisingly up by seven points. Dykes would get the return, usually this is a big play or a gaff, and guess what? It's a gaff, it's recovered by the Storm's Mike Johnson as the ball's fumbled. Jim would breach the goalposts 10 to nothing in favor of Seattle. More plays for Rick Meyer in Seattle as he would throw the ball to Reeves down the right side who'd get tackled at the 50, but Meyer would get sacked on this play by Joe Kelly and this would cause a long third down play as Meyer would run past defenders, run past the 50, get close to the first down marker, and it would lead to a long breaching the goal post field goal, 13 to nothing. More for Seattle, Meyer would find Ed McCaffrey between two defenders, give him the salute at the 40 yard line, and Herschel Walker would scamper in for his touchdown as it seemed like they got more rushing yards for running backs with Randall Cunningham not playing. Thurman Thomas would get injured on this play, so this wouldn't help Birmingham that much. He would be replaced by Dalton Hilliard, and this would lead to a Chris Jackie made field goal. It's up and good, so it's a consolation prize, but they need to get at least 17 points to tie this game, and even that wouldn't get them into the playoffs if San Francisco wins. This might help, as Meyer fumbles recovered by Birmingham. Dalton Hilliard finds himself wide open in the flats, and he would scamper in for the touchdown, cutting the lead almost in half. Jim Kelly gets the ball back. Didn't seem like Seattle did much in the second half. He'd find Sean Dawkins down the left side. Without the speed, he gets inside the 10, eventually getting tackled, that is, and then Jim Kelly would find Dalton Hilliard on the wheel route. He's in the end zone. Three-point ball game. Celebrate there, Jim Kelly. The Rebels, with a fourth down last ditch effort, they have a chance to try to tie this game up or possibly win. Hilliard with the catch far behind the sticks. He gets tackled. Birmingham's eliminated after losing 21 17. They're 7 9. Storm are 10 6 in the playoffs. Since Birmingham lost, this is a mere formality. The Sharks have already made the playoffs. However, since they were playing at the same time, they didn't know that yet. Roger Craig comes back from injury. At the very beginning, Chris Carter scared for the touchdown to go up 7-3 early. Roger Craig coming back from injury in the Sharks drive. He'll get in for the touchdown, so it's boom, boom. It's looking like a big shootout, but already up 13-7. Don the Magic Man Mikowski would pull James Jett out of his hat, and James Jett would jet all the way into the end zone. 20-7 lead in the first half. He would hand off to Craig again, coming back from injury, showing what he's worth making it inside of Dallas territory. And Don the Magic Man Mikowski yet again would pull James Jett out of his hat, diving into the end zone for the touchdown. 21-7 game, so it's seeming pretty flawless for Dallas. Don the Magic Man Mikowski would try to get more points. He'll throw to Megget, but it's intercepted by Lemuel Stinson as he would get it close to the 30-yard line. This would lead to Bernie Kozar feeling the burn. He would throw the ball to Curtis Duncan, who would dunk the ball into the end zone. 27-14, Mikowski with the handoff to Craig. Craig would find the sideline. He would go... Get off me! As the Sharks and Roger Craig would score, they win the game 34-14, San Francisco is 9-7, Dallas is 6-10, and, and yes, the Sharks will take the sixth seed in the Bobcat Conference playoffs.